Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked and today I'm going to be showing you how to take HDR photos step by step, everything from how to take the photo all the way down to how to edit it and export the photo. Now the reason I'm doing this is because a bunch of you are wanting to do this HDR time lapse. Now the workflow for the HDR time lapse is, well one, very time consuming, two, I wouldn't call it difficult, but for someone that's never done HDR photos, they would find it a might bit on the difficult side, I would say. So, what I'm going to do is kind of show you how to do an HDR photo, and then we're going to shoot another video, and I'm going to show you how to do the HDR time lapse, which I'm hoping to have out sometime next week. So, um, some things you need to know, some things to understand HDR. Number one, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range Photo. Now, um, now what you're doing is you're taking an underexposed photo, a normal exposed photo, and an overexposed photo, and you're putting them into one photo. Now what happens is when you do that, all the overexposed and underexposed, when you climb it into one photo, you're able to get a better depth of field. You're actually able to see the, the colors, everything's more vibrant, uh, the shadows that you would normally have are not there, are not nearly as present. So, but it also gives you almost a fake cartoony look sometimes too if you don't do it right. And that all has to do with your editing. You can actually make an HDR photo look pretty normal, not completely 100% normal, uh, compared to like a normal just single picture photo. Um, so things you need to know about HDR photos is one, you can't have any movement because you're taking three photos. So if you take a photo of me standing here and then another photo of me standing here and another photo of me standing here, when you put the three photos together, it's going to look really, really weird and it's not going to look right. Where if it's all still, so if you notice out here, I'm going to take a photo of this foliage out here. Um, I like some of the colors. It's fall time right now here in Kentucky. And, but I have to make sure when I take these three pictures that I don't have cars going through my photo in the background because it's going to cause a problem in putting the three photos together in Photoshop. Now there are two main photo editing softwares that I like, Photoshop and Photomatrix. I prefer to use Photomatrix, but I figure most of you have Photoshop, so I'm going to show you how to do the editing in Photoshop first. And then if you guys actually want to see how to work the Photomatrix software, leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to uh, run through a fast tutorial on how to use Photomatrix because it, it's a really good, well it's pretty much HDR dedicated software. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get our camera set up. So I've already done this but I've gone through, set up all my settings for a normal exposure. So the first thing you want to do is what you would normally take, not over or underexposed, you want a normal exposed photo. Now I've already got um, what I would think is a good normal exposed photo set up. So now I'm going to set up my over and underexposed and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay guys, so I've already got my exposures down like I already said, but I'll go on and show it to you here. We're just going to go on and take a picture real quick. And that's my normal exposure. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go up to menu now that we got our exposures good. We're going to go over to, as you can see, the second camera here. We're going to click on exposures. We're going to set. And we're going to go to negative and plus two. So it's going to be it's going to take an exposure negative and plus two, so mainly it's going to give it a little overexposed and a little underexposed. Now, uh, you can do more than three pictures, so if you really want to do like negative plus five and negative plus uh, like negative plus five neg and positive plus five, and then take a uh, negative plus three and a positive three and a negative one and a positive one, and then you've got like eight photos, you want to collide them together, you can do that, but we're just going to do three pictures today. So uh, let's go back up here, let's set it, all right, set OK. So now it's set, let's hit menu again. Now we're going to go into continuous shooting. Now if you have a remote you can use that. I cannot use my remote to the simple fact that it will affect shooting of my Canon T2i because I'm shooting with the Canon T2i, I'm taking the pictures with the T3i. It, if I use my, um, my remote, it, uh, I guess with Magic Lantern, it accepts my remote and it caused, actually caused me to screw up my video a minute ago when I was pushing the remote up here. So I'm just going to do it by hand. Now like I said, you want to make sure there's no movement. So I have some vehicles in the background right now. And as soon as they get out of the way, we're going to take three shots. So I'm going to go up here, try to be as light as you can on the camera, and here we go. Three pictures. Now let's go and pull those three. So overexposed, underexposed. That's normal exposure, that's underexposed, and that's overexposed. Now we're going to take these three pictures, 
and we're gonna put them into one photo. Uh, turn it into one photo. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to the house. I'm going to upload them into Photoshop and I'm actually gonna show you how to edit them. All right guys, so I'm at the computer now and what I'm gonna show you guys how to do is actually edit the three photos that I took earlier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Photoshop. We're gonna go to File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro, Browse, scroll down until you find your three photos, highlight them all, bring them in, <clears throat> push OK. Now it's giving me this error and the reason I'm getting an error um, is because for some reason I shot this with the camera, the T2i, the Canon T T3i I mean, and the I shot it in RAW and for some reason I don't know why but um, my Photoshop won't read RAW. Actually if you guys know why Photoshop won't read my RAW Canon files please let me know. Um, I think it might be because I haven't installed my um, Canon software CD. I think that might add the raw inputs that it needs uh, plugins for Photoshop. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I had to put it into uh, Lightroom and export it into a JPEG and put it on my desktop just to let you guys know real quick. So, unfortunately, I'm not Mr. Know It All. I wish I was. All right, so it does the three photos. And as you can see, I saw it plus, plus one, zero, negative one. I thought I had done it plus two, zero, negative two, but I didn't. Um, and because of that, if you notice, um, the photos here are not too overexposed, not too underexposed. So if I had done it, this would be the same, but if I had done it with negative two or negative three, um, they would have been a lot more underexposed and a lot more overexposed. So not a big deal in this, for instance, just gonna kind of showing you guys how I work it. So this is kind of your tool palette over here. And uh, I usually just play around with these so I get what I like, um, which I already kind of know exactly what I want here so um, bring up the uh, too much detail a little bit of detail bring down the shadows bring down the highlights okay I like this this to me is a good photo right here so I'm gonna click OK it's going to merge them all now all right So there's my photo. Now one more thing I want to do is go to my spot healing brush. <clears throat> I really hate these wires that are right here so I'm just gonna take them out real quick. Now the nice thing about clouds are you're gonna see some distortion in these clouds after I do the spot healing brush and they're gonna be a little bit different than what it looked like before I started using the spot healing brush. But clouds don't have a specific shape so um, like you can see it distorted that a little bit right there but I mean people really don't know the difference um, that this was done with spot healing so for clouds something like this unless it's a major like this looks really weird you'll be fine just doing this and getting these wires out of here I hate hate these wires alright so the wires are out photo looks pretty decent what I'm going to do is I'm going to oh, I'm going to save it As a JPEG, do, do, do right on the desktop. Now I will upload this onto my Facebook um, description. The link to my Facebook will be in the description bar down below, and uh, I think it'll also be uploaded to. Well, you'll be able to see it through Twitter as well. Um, so you guys can actually go take a look at this, see what you think, um, leave comments, or you know just get an idea of what an HDR photo really looks like. Um, I'll upload that so you guys can see it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to downsize. Photoshop and I'll actually show you the edited photo here open with and there it is there's what we just did and we're gonna do one more thing real quick and we're gonna open up the program called Photo Matrix now this is where I do most of my editing I really really like Photo Matrix quite a bit uh, so you're gonna click here we're gonna do the browse thing again we're gonna get our three photos there they are highlight them all open okay I've already got my settings the way I like them. Click OK. Now my Photo Matrix Pro also has the tone mapping, which I think cost extra. I'm not sure, and I want to say the software is around fifty dollars. But to tell you the truth, I really don't know. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember what I paid for it. 
So uh, it's an awesome piece of software, though, and I highly, if you got the money lying around, buy it if you're planning to do a lot of HDR type photos, um, because it's really, in my opinion, the best on the market that I've come across. All right, so it opens it up. Now it gives me some presets. Um, so these are all just presets that I have to, to pick from. Um, and I don't like, I usually don't use the presets. Every once in a while a preset, like, that doesn't look too bad, but that looks very similar to the, um, the one I just edited in Photoshop. That's kind of nice. That brings out the, the greens and the leaves. That actually looks really nice. So, um, so this preset I'd probably use, actually. Um, that looks very, very, very pretty. Um, but if you don't want to use the presets, and you can take the presets and, and do stuff to the presets, as you can see. You got this whole tone mapping over here, and you're able to edit the presets a little more the way you like it. And you get that cartoony look again. Absolutely hate that. Um, and so you have all these different different things to pick from here and edit, which gives you a lot more than Photoshop um, to work with. So once you get your shot and say, "I like this shot," I'm just going to click process. Uh, and it processes it, and there it is. Now I'd go into Photoshop and take out. Uh, these wires again and I have to be a little more uh, picky about doing the wires because I want to make sure that the coloring stays right because this is a little more uh, vibrant colors than the last shot that we did anyways but that's photo matrix it's a pretty awesome software and that's what we're gonna actually be using to do our HDR time-lapse this software so to do HDR time-lapse you're gonna need this um, I you might be able to do it in Photoshop. You can do a batch automate, but I've never really messed with it. This works really well. It's very very easy to to, to use. So, anyways, again, my name is David with Media Unlocked, and um, check me out on Facebook or Twitter. Both are named David D Images, and that's how you can keep up with all the updates. I tried to be really good about giving frequent updates about what I'm doing and when new stuff is coming out. This is what I really try to do. Um, on Facebook and Twitter. So anyways, you guys have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.